In this video I shall be showing you how to replace the diaphragm and gasket on this type of Briggs & Stratton lawnmower engine. Hello and welcome. This is a step by step video and the tools you'll need are a 3 8 or a 10mm socket, an half inch or a 13mm socket and ratchet, a medium sized Phillips headed screwdriver, something with a nice straight edge, some carburetor spray and an airline blower. And in terms of safety equipment, we'll need to wear gloves and safety glasses. And so, to be thorough with this type is a must. And so that's why I want to remove it. But before we do so, we'll give it a spray with some carburetor spray to clean it off so we can see a little better. I'll just spray around this area and then it'll penetrate into the dirt and loosen it. And then after it's soaked for a moment or two, we give it a quick blast off with the airline. And all of that dirt just flies off. That's now made it much much better to see things clearer so we can now work on it. Ok so firstly I remove the air box by using a flat headed screwdriver to remove the centre screw. And because this is the only thing that holds the air box on it can be lifted off completely after it's removed. And you can see inside there we've got the sponge of the filter. Removing this has now made it so much easier to look around and see what we're doing. And so whilst we're at this point, it's good now to take a really, really close look and see if there's anything obviously broken or missing. Is there any cracks or breaks in the plastic of the carburetor? Is any of the metal obviously bent or broken? It's good just to have an initial look at that now. OK, so there's just two bolts holding this carburetor and fuel tank assembly in place. The small one is here and then there's a larger one back here. And when those two are removed, the whole assembly will come off together. And so this side requires a 3 8 of an inch socket or 10 mil to be closest in millimetres. And once we've removed that one, we can now remove the larger one, which requires a half inch socket or 13 mil to be closest. And now you can see that this assembly is loose. And so the only thing that's holding it in place now is that the carburetor inlet tube is still slid loosely over the engine inlet tube as well as this little rubber elbow that loosely connects the carburetor to the breather pipe. But at this point if we give the fuel tank a gentle pull and a wiggle it will disconnect from those two areas. Now it's important not to pull too hard or too far back at this stage because there is still a connection there from the throttle linkage. So now we've got to gently remove this rod from the throttle lever on the carburettor. And because the end of the throttle linkage is shaped like this, and it's placed into the hole in the carburettor's throttle lever, like so, we need to remove it in this motion. We need to come down with the carburettor and then lift the back up and slide it out. So in that motion, there we go, just like that. And the fuel tank and carburettor assembly is removed. And we can see round the back of the carburettor there where it was slid onto the inlet tube of the engine. But now it's been removed, it's evident that there was a lot of dirt round the back of the carburettor we couldn't see. And inside the fuel tank I can see there's a lot of dirt. And if we take a look in the inlet of the carburettor, we can see that needs a good clean too. So just like before, I'll give it a good spray of carburettor spray and then let it soak for a few minutes. And once it's done that, I again give it another thorough blow off with the airline. And that cleans it up nicely. OK, so now I'll remove and keep safe that rubber elbow for the breather. This just simply pulls off. OK, so the next stage is to remove this series of five screws that hold the carburettor to the fuel tank. So using a medium size Phillips screwdriver, we just remove these screws and I personally have become accustomed to loosening these screws in opposites. So I'll loosen one side and then turn it round and loosen the opposite side. And then I'll continue to do this for all of them. I've got in the habit of doing this just in case there is any distortion by removing one side and not the other. Because this carburetor is made of a plastic type material. So my methodology is that when I'm doing these screws like this, it's undoing the pressure evenly. There isn't pressure on one side and not the other too much. But when they're completely loosened, we can then remove them. And once that's the case, the carburetor can simply be lifted off the top of the fuel tank. And so this is what the carburetor looks like when it's been removed. There should be two tubes at the bottom there. The short one should have a metal gauze filter present and wrapped over it like this. And the longer one should have a smaller metal gauze filter at its very tip. 
And like this carburettor, what you usually find when you remove it is that the diaphragm and the gasket are stuck to the bottom of it, but it may not be the same in all cases. It may well be stuck to the area on the fuel tank instead. We can appreciate now at this point how important it was to take the time removing the carburettor when we look inside the top of the fuel tank here. In this small compartment where the short pickup pipe feeds into, you can see there when I take this small screwdriver and have a little scrape that there's so much dirt and crud inside there. And whilst this metal gauze is designed to filter out this dirt and crud, and it's obviously doing a good job because it's inside the compartment, I'm sure most people would agree that any crud that's smaller than this will of course pass through it, and this could go a long way to blocking that filter. So we need to give this whole fuel tank a good clean. And I like to add some soap, and then wash it, and rinse it, to remove any residues of fuel before I blow it out with the airline. And after I've done that, I'll do some fine cleaning with the carb spray, just to make sure that all of these fuel holes are clear. And then I'll give it another blast with the airline, until the fuel tank's completely dry and clean. And whilst we're focused in on the fuel tank, I want us to take a look at something that's often overlooked. Now it's not really an overly common problem, but it's well worth a check. This special machined area where the carburettor sits, it needs to be completely flat from one edge to the other. And that's of course because we need to get a nice airtight seal between the carburettor and the fuel tank. And whilst it's more common for the carburettor to distort, being made of a plastic type material, particularly in the areas between the securing bolts, where there's less direct pressure holding this area down, there can be a slight gap appear in places like this where air can be drawn in where it shouldn't and fuel can escape, or both. And this can obviously disrupt the workings of the carburettor where we've got starting problems and running problems. So just to have a quick check of this, I find something that's got a definite straight edge. This is just a wood chisel that has a nice straight edge and I just hold it from one side to the other and take a look down and see if there's a gap there. Of course, there's going to be gaps where there are purposely machined cutouts. But what I'm talking about is, does the metal that exists there touch the straight edge as it should do? I just move the straight edge up and down that machined area from different angles and just see if all looks well. This one is actually okay. As I've said, it only takes a few minutes to do this and it's well worth doing so if you've got your carburettor and fuel tank stripped down this far. I have in the past had a small number of these tanks that are distorted and my remedy for them was to buy new tanks. I do know some people that have put these on a straight edge with some wet and dry sandpaper and sanded them back straight again and they said they've had success with that. I personally have never done this and I'm definitely not saying it's wrong, it's just I can't tell you the outcome from my own experience. And it's worth checking the carburettor for distortions as well, so I'll get the straight edge and run it across the bottom face that meets the fuel tank and make sure that the plastic is touching the straight edge all the way across particularly from bolt hole to bolt hole where it's susceptible to leaks. Okay so now we've sorted out our fuel tank that's nice and clean and okay we can now direct our attention to the carburettor. In this instance where the diaphragm and gasket is stuck to the bottom of the carburettor I'll firstly peel this off and this will be thrown away I shan't be using this again and I shan't be taking any chances whatsoever by refitting this. It's just simply not worth it. If ever I work on a lawnmower with this kind of carburettor system that isn't either starting correctly or isn't running correctly, I always fit a new diaphragm and gasket. They normally come together in a kit. And if you do need one of these kits by the way, I've included an Amazon link down in the description below which will take you directly to the correct one. One thing I've noticed here with this particular carburettor is that there's a spring that's missing that should be here. So I'll have to make sure I fit one of these when I rebuild the carburettor. And as for this metal gauze filter, it is removable and sometimes they do just pull off nicely. But this one seems to be really stuck. And as it's not too blocked here, I'm hoping I can clean it in situ rather than damage it by removing it. But my personal preference is to remove them if I can, so I can take a good look behind there and make sure it's clean. But if yours is indeed stuck like this one and doesn't look too dirty then it will perhaps be absolutely fine if you clean it the way I'm going to clean this. Ok so I'll start the cleaning with the carburettor spray and I'll use the straw pipe to give a shot down each of one of these fuel holes. And if they're nice and clear there'll be a flow in and a flow outwards like this. To do this thoroughly the primer bulb has to be removed. 
Now there is a correct set of tools to remove and refit these primer bulbs and if you have access to them it's best that you use them but of course the average lawnmower owner won't have them and probably won't want to fork out the cost of buying them just to change a primer bulb possibly once. So I'm going to show you a way of removing and replacing the primer bulb without these tools and all you'll need is a flat headed screwdriver. Again, it's not ideal, but it does work and I've done this many times, we just have to take extra care. All I'm doing is basically giving you an option should you wish to take it. So I'll take my carburettor and my flat headed screwdriver and I'll orientate the carburettor onto its side where you can see a little window cut out there with the wing of the primer bulb sticking out of it. And all I do is push in at this point with the screwdriver and as I push in, I push up and outwards as well. And you can see there it's popped the seal. Then I turn it round and I do exactly the same this side and pop the seal. And then I keep going from one side to the other and then lever it out and then eventually it will pull out. And there we have the primer bulb and its retainer removed. But you can see there I'm shooting in the carburetor spray through these holes and you can see a flow out. So we know these are nice and clear. And then I'll give the whole carburettor a good spray throughout and then I'll take the airline and blast it off nice and dry. And then we take the new primer bulb and the retainer placing it in like so making sure that the retaining wings on the retainer are in line with the window cutouts on the carburettor. And then I push down with my fingers and thumb as far down as it will go and then I personally will gently push from one side to the other like this with my flat screwdriver. Again, just pushing it down only a little bit each time so that there's no damage caused to the retainer and making sure that I don't slip off and create another hole in the primer bulb. Or you can place a socket over the top and push it down evenly with the socket. And you'll know when you've got down far enough because you'll feel the retaining wings click into place into the window cutouts. And then the primer bulbs fitted. Another little detail I like to check is this o-ring. This seals the connection between the carburettor and the inlet tube when the carburettor is fitted to the engine. I like to remove this and have a good check to see if it's all okay. And the way I do so is I'll take a flat screwdriver, place it in just underneath the white plastic retainer and above the black o-ring. So basically placed between the two. Then, making sure that I'm not pinching the o-ring whatsoever, I just lever the white plastic retainer off like so. Then the o-ring can be freely pulled out. And I'll take a good look around the o-ring and make sure there's no areas that have been cut, no degraded areas, no areas that have been flattened, and then I'll give it a good clean off. And then I'll look at the retainer as well, just to make sure its structure's okay, and there's no jagged areas that might harm the o-ring or anything like that or any damaged areas that might prevent it from retaining properly. And then I'll clean this off as well. And then I shall refit them, but before I do, I shall remove this dirt out of the seat by giving it a good clean with a cloth. And then I'll look down the Venturi and make sure that the choke throttle plate is present and correct and that it's moving okay when I move the lever. This one's fine. Okay, so in the clean o-ring goes into its clean seat. And then we take the retainer and place it above and then push down on it until it snaps into place. I have had concerns in the past on which way round this retainer is fitted. It does seem to be slightly different on one side to the other, suggesting it does go in a specific way. But I've placed these in both ways in the past and I've never had an issue. But when it has seemingly snapped into place, just make sure it has by checking the level at the top. It should be flush. There shouldn't be any of the retainer sticking out from the carburettor whatsoever. Okay, so now it's time to place on the diaphragm. And there's only one way round this can go, and it's obvious once you match it up. But the diaphragm goes on first, and you just match up the shape of the diaphragm with the shape of the plate on the fuel tank. And then the gasket goes on top of that. Just make sure to clean off any gasket that's still stuck to the carburettor. And so our nice clean carburettor is ready to put back on. So the best way to orientate this is to aim for the fuel pickup pipe to go into the small hole. And you can see that I've now fitted a spring that was missing and this spring needs to rest on top of the diaphragm here. And then just lower the carburettor down onto the gasket. 
and so the carburettor, the gasket and the diaphragm and the top of the fuel tank are all the same shape and we can see that nothing is sticking out there and all is okay. That means we should have clear screw holes now to place back in the screws. As far as I'm concerned, it's important to place them all in together first loosely. And then as we tighten them down, we tighten them down very steadily. So we only put a little bit of tension on each screw and we tighten them in opposites. And by going in opposites, it's going to bring the carburettor down more level. And when we've been right round the circuit once, we'll go round again in the same orientation until the carburettor is nice and tightly fitted to the fuel tank. And we know we've got that nice even tension. And now we can start to think about refitting it to the engine. But before we do, I like to just clean around this area. So I'll give it a good spray down with carburettor spray to help melt into that dirt, making sure I don't get it up into the induction pipe. And then I'll give it a good blast off with the airline. And now it's nice and clean, I have a good look round to see if everything's okay. I just try and give the inlet manifold a wiggle because I have had them come loose before and I've also had them break. I find that generally there is some movement in the breather pipes, but as long as it's not too loose, then it shouldn't be a problem. I've never known it to be. And I'll just want to check that we've still got the two springs and the rod present. But before I go any further, I want to remove the recoil housings. So I can have a look to make sure that the whole length of the inlet pipe is in good order. The last thing I want to do is put everything back together and it's the inlet pipe that's let me down. So now I'm down to this point, I'm going to go that little bit further and be a little bit more thorough. So first of all, if the starter handle is mounted at the top of the lawnmower handle like this, then I remove it and loosen the tension by allowing it to spring back into the recoil. Then, using a 3 8 or 10mm socket, I'll remove this bolt here. And then I'll remove this bolt here around the front with the same size socket. And again, with the same size socket, I'll remove this bolt round the back here. And then with those bolts removed, the whole housing will just simply lift off. And that allows me to give a thorough visual check of the inlet manifold right across here. I'm just making sure that there's no cracks or damage in this. I have in the past had breaks in these and little tiny cracks that you wouldn't believe would leak in air, but they do. And if these bolts aren't tight enough, it's going to draw in air through the gasket where it meets the engine body. So it's important just to make sure that these are nice and tight. And I do know these particular ones are. And as the recoil cover is off, it just makes it a lot better to see around whilst fitting the carburettor. So let's go ahead and fit it. And I do know some people who like to put a smear of grease on the o-ring inside here. Some people do, some people don't. In the past I've tried both ways and haven't seen any particular difference between the two of course. I suppose the rationale behind it is that it just helps it slide back onto the induction tube. But I can't say as I've ever had a problem there. So whether you do or you don't apply a thin slither of grease in there is down to you. So in either case we'll take the fuel tank carburetor assembly. And before we do place this hole over the induction tube we need to place the throttle linkage inside the throttle lever first because we need to turn the carburettor at a certain angle to get the linkage in. And if the carburettor was to be fixed in place first, we wouldn't be able to get that angle. As you can see, the linkage is now connected and we can now push the carburettor onto the induction tube. And now we can refit the rubber elbow and reconnect the breather. And so at this point, the fuel tank and carburettor are loosely connected to the engine. And now I'll place the front securing bolt in loosely. And then I'll make sure I fit the spacer here where the larger bolt goes. And then I'll place in the bolt and then tension it up. I'll then revert back to the small bolt and tension that up. This is all now firmly fixed into place and the linkage is all connected. And just to make sure, when I move the governor arm, the throttle linkage moves the throttle lever. And then I shall place my recoil back on and fix in the securing bolts. And all that's needed then is to clean and refit the air filter. If you would rather have a free printable download leaflet, then there's a link down there to that as well. The link goes directly onto my website where you can download a copy of this, as I've said, absolutely free. The download is an easy to follow step by step instruction on how to replace these diaphragms. And the best part about that is you haven't got to take your computer or your laptop or your iPad into the workshop with you. You can print off the download and take that in and work from the sheet in your own time. And so now I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't done already.
Thank you for watching.